From mind to metal, it's Randy Krupp's Garage. Welding is the most awesome way to weld ever. You've got this electrode and it's sharp as a needle. When it's pointed and it's sharp, that lightning bolt goes exactly where you want it to go. Okay, we're just trying our wheel on for the first time and it's really pretty cool. That elaborate buck that we built assures us that the wheel and the wheel opening is just right in relationship to our tire. It really looks awesome. I'm really pleased. Shaping a piece that's nine feet long by hand is a bit of a trick. I kind of look at it like a dance. Here we are using the English wheel above my high planishing station. It's all about getting into the flow of the piece. fitting pretty good. Okay, these giant reverses are some of the most difficult panels on the whole car to make. Okay, a lot of you may be wondering, how was he able to do this? How can I build a whole car from scratch? In back of me and around me are the tools, every tool that I use to build this whole car. Okay, number one tool was shrinking. I did a lot of shrinking. All these corners were shrunk in. An awful lot of shrinking achieved with the Marchant Shrinker. Favorite tool in the whole shot. Awesome piece of machinery. Without good shrinking ability, you're really limited. More important than stretching ability. A lot of people think I use the English wheel. The only thing that I use the English wheel for on this project was the reverses on the front fenders. Couldn't have really done it without an English wheel. It did a very, very nice job of making very smooth reverses. Next to it, my big Chicago pneumatic planishing hammer with the big 36 inch arms. It's a great tool. I work alloy. It raises material just fine for me. I don't really need a big hammer. My uh, Chicago pneumatic planishing hammers do the job. 
and the handheld Chicago pneumatic planishing hammer to get perfect contour over these really long panels. That was the key to this whole thing. The bead roller for tipping all the edges that you see here. So that's it, you guys. That's about all it takes. I got to get back to work. Racing engine pioneer Ryan Falconer visited Randy to discuss the setup of his V12. On hand was Mike Johns. And I'm familiar with all those sensors and stuff, so. Good. Yeah, Jim's really nice. Uh, it's just a breather fitting. It just goes to ambient. Oh, really? Yeah, it doesn't have to go, because this isn't, there's no, if we had a manifold on it, you know, yeah. uh, then it would go to vacuum. So it would see vacuum pressure. Okay. So this can be anywhere in the engine compartment that sees the air temp, you know, this is kind of unique because it's going to be outside. Mm -hmm. And not uh, inside, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to be sucking actually air temp from outside. So this, this could actually go in like uh, in front of the radiator yeah. or anywhere where it picks up the temperature, ambient temperature. Yeah, not because under hood temperature. No, we if, if these up. were under hood, we'd right. want to be under hood. Right. What is the pressure setting on this thing? Wow. I think it's 60. About 60 pounds. 60 pounds, 60, 65, somewhere in there. And this is your oil pressure? That's a little pressure right yeah. up there. Okay. It'll be warmed up many yeah. t many times before it's ever stepped on. Yeah. And we, we, might, we might wait and let you step on it. Yeah. Mike, the big Mike, is here to try it on for size for the first time. We're actually going to see how he fits. We Whoa. got this cool little donor seat. We think we can use this as a basic frame. We can slide it back about three more inches, we hope. His feet are actually touching the firewall. Now the last question here is the steering. Got to make sure, where's the steering wheel actually going to sit in this puzzle? I'm thinking right about there, maybe up just a little bit, right about about an inch or two above the cowl, somewhere in there. That's a big 17-inch wheel, but yeah, it looks like you have room to steer it. Yep, good grip. And, the, and the suicide doors are going to make it really easy to get in and out of. Thanks. I think we're on to something, Mike. Thanks, buddy. Cool. Randy's idea for the design of the Falconer's grill came from his experience in the world of hot glass. His inspiration was the Tiffany glass pulled feather pattern seen in this vase and goblet.
The insignia for the car features a skydiving falcon drawn by Randy Johnson. It appears on five Champlevé badges on a copper base, created by San Francisco hot glass artist Margarita Popova. They're mounted on the wheel hubs and the steering wheel. Right up, no issues at all. A couple little backfires. Started up, we had oil pressure. Everything looked good, unbelievable. Cool.